The topic for today is hydrogen technology in thermal analysis. Um, we are doing that um, now for many years um, with our instruments, our thermal analytical instruments. Uh, many of them can uh, measure under hydrogen atmospheres. Um, and we have realized um, that um, the demand for these measurements um, is uh, strongly increasing. Um, there are multiple applications behind uh, measurements uh, under hydrogen atmospheres, especially in, uh, for our dilatometers, our thermogravimetric analyzers, calorimeters, and high pressure instruments. Um, I will uh, give you a short overview um, of what we are doing, what you can do with our instruments. And at the end, um, I will show you shortly also our hydrogen safety system, which we develop for such measurements and which is necessary uh, for safety issues. So let's start with um, the applications for measurements on the hydrogen atmospheres. Um, uh, one big issue is um, energy. Um, hydrogen um, will be in the future for sure a solution um, to produce and, and store energy. And in, in this whole cycle of the production, the, the storage and the usage of uh, hydrogen, um, our instruments uh, give uh, a support or can generate some data. Uh, for example, the production can be done um, with um, photovoltaic, for example. And um, the photovoltaic modules are more or less semiconductors, and some of our devices um, can uh, measure um, useful data for, for semiconductors. Also, the, the storage of hydrogen is a big issue. It can be done with uh, sorption materials, and the sorption processes can be analyzed with thermogravimetric analysis. And um, the energies involved with calorimeters and so on. So one big top topic right now and for the future is for sure energy, and also climate is um, a big issue um, to avoid um, CO2, and this can be done with um, alternative um, energy sources to the fossils to oil and coal, uh, windmills, photovoltaic, and also gasification processes of solid fuels, of, of biomass, uh, can generate hydrogen um, as an alternative uh, energy source. And these gasification processes can also be optimized and analyzed with, with our thermogravimetric analyzers. Then, um, in our equipment, we, we have also traditional um, applications for hydrogen atmospheres, like sintering processes, um, which are often done under hydrogen atmospheres. The sintering of, of powder metals, for example. Um, sintering is a process where you heat up the sample. At the beginning, you see here on the left hand side, you have um, a sample which is called black body, then you heat it up. Uh, it's a green body, it's a green body at first, you heat it up and then um, the density of the sample is increasing. Um, and in the middle part here, it's the, the so called black body. And at the end of the sintering process, you have the final uh, product. And this sintering, especially for metals, as I have said, is often done under hydrogen atmospheres. Um, a big field um, where hydrogen is applied are our dilatometers. We have more or less two kinds of uh, dilatometers, the pushrod dilatometers 
and the optical dilatometers. The push rod dilatometers um, are um, standardized. There are ASTM norms and um, European norms where the technique is described. And it's more or less a technique in which um, the dimension of a substance is measured under a small load um, as a function of temperature or time in a specified atmosphere. Uh, here is a, a schematical drawing of one of our dilatometers. And what is used here is a push rod which is the, the yellow part here. And the push rod uh, is in contact with the sample. And whenever the sample is uh, expanding or shrinking, then this push rod moves into the measuring system and um, the, yeah, the dimensional change of the sample can be monitored very sensitively in the nanometer range. Um, we uh, have two kinds of, of push rod dilatometers, horizontal ones and vertical ones. Um, both have advantages and, and disadvantages. Um, but for sintering and uh, for, for the measurements on the hydrogen, the vertical systems are preferred. Uh, because for sintering measurements, um, it's uh, beneficial if there is no friction on, on the sample, which is the case in horizontal push rod dilatometers. They are placed in this uh, sample rod, in this sample carrier, it's, it's a half tube. And when you put your sample inside, and if it is moving, then you have a friction against this uh, sample holder which is not the case in a vertical setup. And therefore, it is better to use a vertical system for sinter measurements. Uh, here is a typical um, measurement on a powder metal, uh, which is heated up here. Um, and the length change is this orange curve here. And um, when you heat up the sample, then at a certain temperature, um, you see here a shrinkage. So the, the curve is going downwards the length, which means um, shrinkage. And this indicates that the sintering process is here in that uh, area. And um, at the end, you see no more um, yeah, uh, dimensional change. And these measurements have been done under hydrogen atmospheres, which is um, beneficial here because you have no oxidation. And uh, sometimes um, a reduction of the metal is, is wanted to optimize the simple process. So this is a, a common uh, application for hydrogen uh, atmospheres for a long time the hydrogen sintering in a push rod in the meter. Um, it can be optimized, this sintering process, um, by using a, a special software. It's called the rate-controlled sintering software. Uh, what is done here is um, the length change of the sample or the density of the sample is programmed. So it is... You, you type in to the software which density you want to have in which time and so on. And then uh, the furnace the, the regulates the temperature profile to reach that uh, density profile. Um, this can be used to optimize the production process to, to get good products with the highest possible density and to save uh, costs, uh, energy costs for the furnace uh, to avoid uh, unnecessarily high temperatures and so on. So this is also uh, nice to do uh, if you are in the field of hydrogen sintering of, of powder metals, for example. 
Uh, we also have special push rod dilatometers in, in our product range. Uh, the heating um, for, for these inductive push rod dilatometers is done with a copper coil, which is illustrated here in that photograph. So around the push rod and the sample, uh, the copper coil heats up the sample inductively. Um, this can be done um, for metals, for steel or other metals and alloys. And the purpose of it is um, you, you can heat up uh, very quickly and also cool down uh, quickly with a couple of hundred or even thousand Kelvin per second. And um, the application behind is to generate um, phase diagrams, CCT diagrams for, for steels and other metals. And it is necessary for some applications to cool down with maximum uh, cooling rates. And the highest possible cooling rates can be achieved um, with hydrogen. So when I go back to that uh, foil here, the heating is uh, with that uh, copper coil. And inside these copper coils, there are small holes. And through that hold, holes, you can purge with a gas, with a cooling gas onto the sample to quench it with a gas. And uh, usually helium gas is used or nitrogen, but if you need the, the highest possible cooling rates, hydrogen gas is used for that. So this is also an application for, for hydrogen atmospheres, a, a special one. Um, so with hydrogen, 500 Kelvin per seconds can be used. And with the other gases with helium, uh, it, it can go up to 400 Kelvin per second. So with, with this hydrogen uh, gas, uh, 100 Kelvin per second more is, is possible. Then the second type of dilatometers we have are optical dilatometers or heating microscopes. Um, they consist also of, of a furnace, of course, to heat up to, to very high temperatures. Um, and a, a light source is used, which is uh, shining into the furnace. And on the other side of the furnace, there is a, a camera which records individual pictures or movies. And the shadow images of the samples are recorded. And a broad variety of applications can be done. So um, when the sample is melting, for example, a half sphere is formed usually, and then the contact angles can be measured from the contact angles. For example, the surface tension uh, can be measured and, and other data. But also, uh, these optical dilatometers or heating microscopes are often used for the sintering, for, for, to, to monitor the sintering. And the big advantage um, is that, hang on, um, that there is no force on the samples. It's without uh, um, this contact force, the push rod is applying. Uh, and sometimes, even if this uh, push rod contact force is quite small in the, the milli Newton area, it can also be, it can already be too big and uh, causing a huge influence on, on the sintering process. To avoid that, uh, the better choice is to, to use an optical system. Uh, and if uh, metals are involved, to use hydrogen as an atmosphere. So the ideal instrument for the sintering of powder metals, for example, is an optical dilatometer or optical heating microscope run under hydrogen atmosphere. 
then um, the next uh, type of instruments which we are operating under hydrogen atmospheres are our thermobalances and calorimeters or the combined instruments, um, which are called STA, which stands for simultaneous thermal analysis. And so it, they are combining the DSC and the, the thermogravimetry. And both types, so individual instruments or STAs, can be run under hydrogen and not only at ambient pressures, but also at high pressures. We will see that later on. Um, typical curves of uh, an STA instrument look like that. So there is the red curve, which is giving the, the mass signal when the sample, it's, it's here a, a simple gypsum sample, um, is undergoing a decomposition. Then you see the weight loss here in several steps. You can analyze the weight loss and measure also here with um, yeah, the DSC signal, the enthalpy which is involved for this uh, decomposition processes. Um, here is an, an overview of our product lines um, for, for the STA instruments. We have we, we can cover a broad range of temperature from minus 196 uh, up to 2,400 degrees Celsius. Um, we have classical uh, thermobalances, but also um, uh, magnetic, magnetic suspension balances uh, for complex applications um, with corrosive um, gases where the balance is uh, separated from the sample room. Um, here are some uh, sample holders for the combined application for the TG-DSC or TG-DTA measurements, um, dependent on which sensitivity you need for the DSC signal. We have uh, not only the, the classical heat flux, but also the Calvé type system using some bigger uh, crucibles with multiple thermocouples, thermopiles around it, uh, which ensure a higher sensitivity. Uh, for the pure TGA uh, measurements, we have big crucibles up to 12 millimeters or mesh mesh type uh, sample holders, which can be used. The mesh type is used if you want to see your reactions, for example, of your samples uh, with the reaction gas. Uh, this wheel type uh, sample holders can be used to put on some, some bigger samples. Um, and yes, we, we have hang down uh, samples which are used for oxidation or reduction uh, processes of, of metals, for example, which can be monitored. Um, regarding hydrogen applications, uh, hydrogen is often used um, for the thermogravimetric adsorption. Here is an example of uh, the adsorption of hydrogen on a titanium uh, sample at a constant temperature. In this uh, example, 700 degrees Celsius, um, the pressure was increased successively. And you can see here the adsorption uh, isotherm of hydrogen on the titanium uh, sample. The same you can do um, for the desorption. Um, here is the desorption. Um, the sample, titanium uh, hydrate, uh, dehydrate in this example was heated up. And you can see that the hydrogen is desorbed in two steps here. Um, and this was done under, under ambient pressure. And with our system, um, the pressure can be varied in 
relatively broad ranges. So we have uh, high pressure systems, which can apply up to 150 bar simultaneously to high temperature. So at the same time, high temperature, for example, 1,600 degrees Celsius and 150 bar. An overview of our uh, instrument types is given here. You can find these information also on our website. Um, there are the specs for the individual instruments and the brochures which you can download or uh, uh, see on, on the website, linsize.com. And high pressure applications are, there's a broad range of application, of course, adsorption. Um, here you can see an example of our high pressure DSC with the purpose to measure the sorption heat. In this example, the sorption of hydrogen on a, a platinum aluminum catalyst at a constant temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. And you can see um, hydrogen was applied here at 15 bar. And during the sorption, it's an exothermic process. Um, this entropy was evolved. So uh, beside sorption processes, gasification is a big issue. Um, and the gasification can be done in uh, yeah, uh, multiple atmospheres. Um, here is an example of the gasification of a biomass sample. It, it was uh, more or less a wood, uh, a special kind of wood the sample which was burned off under high pressure. Uh, under water vapor uh, pressure of 50 bar. And then at a certain temperature, you see here the red curve. At the beginning, uh, you see a weight loss of the volatiles inside this uh, biomass sample. And then here at that point, um, this water vapor was uh, pumped in at high pressure. And then you see here the decomposition, the so-called gasification of this uh, sample. And during that process, this is used to uh, produce uh, hydrogen gas. So when you um, make this gasification on the water vapor, for example, then you can produce hydrogen gas. So this is also we yeah, are a big issue at the moment to produce yeah, synthesis gases or hydrogen gases. So, but if you want to do all these measurements on the hydrogen, um, it's important to make some precautions, some, some safety um, yeah, equipments uh, to, to implement into the system. Because uh, if Hydrogen is starting to react with uh, oxygen. A lot of energy is involved. Uh, and this can be avoided. Um, we are into that hydrogen fields for, I would say, 10 or more years now. And we have developed our own hydrogen safety system, um, which looks like that here. It's uh, yeah, uh, a quite small system. And um, it consists of um, hydrogen sensors uh, to detect leakages. So there is a hydrogen sensor near the furnace, of course. If there is a leakage there, then this very sensitive hydrogen sensor gives a signal to um, the safety system here. And this system controls uh, the gas flow of, of the hydrogen purge. And there is a connection of an inert gas, for example, nitrogen or argon. And as soon as, as one of the sensors in the room or uh, near the instrument gives an alert, then uh, the valve uh, for the hydrogen purge is locked and the valve for the nitrogen is opened. 
And the same is if there is a shutdown of the electrical power, um, then these valves open and close also automatically. Um, and the hydrogen gas is purged out uh, and burned off. There is a, a burner here located and the hydrogen is, is burned off. You, there is a, a small flame. The amount of, of hydrogen is not that big. The volume inside the furnace, it's quite small. Um, so the amount is, is not that big. There is not a, a big flame coming out like uh, in yeah, fuel raffineries. It's a small flame and it's uh, a controlled burn off uh, of this uh, gas of the hydrogen. So to conclude, this uh, webinar uh, was supposed to give you a, a short overview of uh, our instruments which can be used um, for hydrogen atmospheres. Um, we see a, a strong, strongly increasing demand in various fields, uh, not only in the traditional hydrogen sintering uh, processes, but also in, in the very important future key areas like energy and climate. Um, the, the instrument classes, uh, Linsize offers measurements under hydrogen atmospheres are our pushrod dilatometers, our optical dilatometers, the thermogravimetric balances, our calorimeters, the DSCs, the combined instruments, TGDSC, uh, and it is planned also our thermophysical instruments uh, to do measurements also under hydrogen to measure uh, hole constants, uh, charge carrier concentrations for ca semiconductors and so on under hydrogen atmospheres. Um, we offer not only uh, thermal analytical instruments to vary the temperature, but also simultaneously the pressures. Um, we can apply high pressures uh, up to 150 bar, uh, but also low pressures, uh, vacuum, down to 10 to minus 5 millibar. So at the same time, we can vary pressure and temperature, and also under hydrogen if requested. And we, um, regarding safety, uh, we, uh, for, for hydrogen measurements, we develop our own system. Nevertheless, um, it is uh, highly recommended to uh, discuss with us uh, prior to, to hydrogen uh, measurements what is necessary in your laboratory. Um, you have to prepare a little bit your laboratory um to to make it safe so to implement their for example optical and acoustical warnings um and and uh, to implement our safety system maybe uh, additional hydrogen sensors and so on um yes um now there is room for discussion or for your questions so you can use the chat to type in uh, if you have some questions, and then I will try to answer that. Yes, there is one important question. It is sometimes not recommended to use the platinum-based thermocouples in, in hydrogen. Uh, that's, that's correct. You cannot use uh, platinum uh, thermocouples, uh, type S, for example, uh, for measurements under hydrogen. Uh, type C is necessary, which is tungsten and rhenium inside. 
Um, so uh, you need to exchange for hydrogen measurement the sample carriers, and in the uh, sample carriers, there are some for some instruments there is included the thermocouple uh, for the DSC, for example. Uh, you you need to use Type C, these tungsten types, or for the dilatometers, there is uh, a, a, a thermocouple integrated inside. You have to exchange that when you want to measure under hydrogen. There is another question regarding the maximum pressure, uh, why our systems uh, are uh, have, have maximum uh, maximum pressure of 150 bar. So there are some uh, safety uh, levels in, in high pressure measurements. Um, and above 150 bar, um, we have we will face two problems so um, that the safety regulations for these measurements are much more complicated um, compressors quite big compressors would be necessary to generate such uh, such pressures uh, and the prices for uh, these instruments would go up exponentially so if we would have an inquiry for these um, very high pressures above 150, then for sure we uh, could do that. We could develop such devices. Um, we are doing a lot of, of special um, instruments according to the customer's needs. Um, but so far, we did not have a demand for pressures above 150 bar. Uh, maybe that's coming in the future, but for now, uh, our limit was 150 bar, and that was for this gasification studies of, of biomass and, and coal samples. <laughs> 